Wire Kelly McHenry has been following that story on the coast and joins us now live from Long Beach. Kelly, what is it like there right now? Right now, pretty much the same as when Dave Bullock was reporting from here. The winds very high, the surf very high. In fact, we have some crazy surfers out here still uh, catching the last waves before Hurricane Hugo moves in. Right now at Long Beach, we are under an official evacuation order. Everyone is ordered to leave the island by just about 10 minutes, about 6 o'clock. That is also the case at Wrightsville Beach, where I was this afternoon. In fact, they, that area was the very first to make that decision to order the residents off of the beach. Why did they do that? Well, it was simply because Hurricane Hugo got much stronger. It sped up toward the North Carolina coast, and officials simply decided that the beach is not a safe place to ride out the storm. All residents are requested to be off the island by 7 p.m. At 2 o'clock, the order went out. All Everyone must leave Wrightsville Beach by 7 o'clock. By mid-afternoon, 20-foot waves were pounding the coastline and had already knocked off a pylon at Johnny Mercer's pier. One spectator on that pier at the time said it was like being on the ocean itself. But it was moving like a ship back and forth, the whole pier. Besides structural damage due to the high winds, homeowners are also worried about two big problems flooding and erosion. Now these homes along Wrightsville Beach are some of the closest to the water and are in great danger now of being into the ocean. But there's nothing homeowners can do about that now. With Hurricane Hugo threatening, they are packing up and leaving. Well, we had to batten down the hatches, of course. We got um, pretty good secure, you know, put everything up and have to get out of here. <laughs> By late afternoon, a steady stream of cars was leaving the island and anyone trying to get back on is being stopped by police. We're here. So by 7 o'clock, Wrightsville Beach will be deserted, its homes and businesses abandoned, as the waves fueled by Hugo's fury advance ever closer to shore. Those waves combined with the winds of Hurricane Hugo certainly pose a threat to damage here. So mad dash, as I said, at the boat landings, people scurrying to get their boats out before it was too late. This is what Hurricane Hugo is doing to the ocean. We rode out by boat today to get a first-hand look at a major storm in the making. Right now, we're just heading into the ocean at Wrightsville Beach. It is only 10.30 in the morning now, and as you can see, the water is already extremely rough. The captain of Bobby Jeffers says it was already getting nasty by his first trip of the day. It looks really rough out, you know, out in the ocean. Six to eight foot seas, probably will get worse. That is why boat owners jammed the loading ramp today, trying to get their boats to a safe place before the storm hit. Bobby Horner was here when Hurricane Hazel struck and says the worst thing is to be caught unprepared. The biggest thing, I guess, is just making sure that the people that haven't gone through one before are prepared, do have all their supplies set aside just in case power goes or whatever on these islands that if they say evacuate to get off. In fact, that's what is happening right now as beaches are being officially evacuated. Authorities aren't taking any chances here as they brace for a hurricane that has already killed dozens of people in its path. Again, here at Long Beach, we are under an evacuation order. Everybody is supposed to be off of this island by 6 o'clock. Three WTBD 11 news crews have kept a vigil at the coast, keeping tabs on the storm's approach and now its aftermath. They've all filed reports with us this past hour. Let's go first now to Ed Crump. Beach. Light brought with it both good news and bad news here at Long Beach. The good news is many of the oceanfront homes, in fact, most of the oceanfront homes, survived the wrath of Hugo. Some did lose porches, windows, some roof sections, things of that nature. But for the most part, damage was limited, and officials here are pretty pleased. The big problem is, though, the beach lost a lot of sand. That sand is a very precious commodity to folks on this island. In fact, some of those folks were up around 2 o'clock this morning out on the oceanfront actually watching the surf pound in to whoop it up and probably forget a little bit about the fact that there was going to be some damage from this storm, but also celebrate the fact that the storm wasn't quite as bad as it could have been. In fact, that appears to be the phrase of the day here at Long Beach, that it could have been much worse. However, there is still one major obstacle to overcome. At 1 o'clock this afternoon, there will be another high tide, and Long Beach officials will be watching to see what effect that high tide has on these dunes, which were already eaten away by Hugo. Ed Crump, WTVD 11 News, Long Beach. They've been a lot worse than they are. Well, that's been much phrase all day, Mike and Miriam, that things could have been a lot worse than they are. You know, it's still very windy out here, although people are already trying to get out and pick up some things. They're not having an easy time of it. Now, you know, 
after saying that phrase, I don't want to minimize the damage here between Ocean Isle and Holden Beach and the three beaches on this island, Long Beach, Caswell Beach, and here at Yopon Beach. It could be in the hundreds of millions of, oh, ex at least a, a close to a hundred million dollars worth of damage, and that's certainly a lot. But some folks expected it to be, you know, maybe of dollars that everything out here could have been wiped out when we're talking about a stage four hurricane. So there is a lot of relief, but some of the damage, as you'll see, is right behind me. The Yopon Beach Pier took a hit. It's done it before. It took it again this time. The end and the center of the pier uh, pulled off. So for the folks here on Oak Island, whether they stayed on the island or sought a place for shelter overnight, it was a long, scary night. Daylight was never so welcome on Long Beach. Not only did it signal the end, of the, but brought with it reports of only moderate damage. While there were some property losses, the biggest problem is beach erosion. Tons of sand ended up on Beach Road, making for rough going. This damage assessment team from the State Department of Transportation found out how rough. But Jim Cook says his car in the sand can easily be moved. We can move some sand, but it looks like the houses, although there's some damage, are in pretty good shape and some debris around, but it's not anything like it could have been. Big wave! But during the early morning hours Friday, many folks at Long Beach feared wouldn't stop at beach erosion. Winds were high and the surf was pounding, but the hurricane never displayed its full force here. It's back in again. That certainly made Bill Todd happy when he returned, keepsakes in hand, to his Sunset Beach home. Todd and his wife, like most folks along the state's southern coast, found little damage to their house. The home was all in one piece. You know, the boards, I think, uh, helped. I'm glad we did that. And uh, really, we found one shingle off, and uh, I'm not even sure whether it's off our house or not. There were certainly some homeowners who fared worse, but then again, some of them were resigned to the fact that they might lose it all. And any less than that, at least seemed like a blessing. WTVD's Ed Crump. Thanks, Dwayne. Coming up next on WTVD 11 News at 5.30, a behind-the-scenes look at just what could go wrong when you're reporting under hazardous conditions. <laughs> Good grief. That is coming up when we come back. <laughs> you know, we here in the news often encounter the unexpected. And that was certainly the case for WTVD 11 newsman Ed Crump and photographer Dave Wertheimer early this morning on Long Beach. The two of them were shooting videotape of Hurricane Hugo as it swept across our shore and now usually we admit our outtakes as we call them. That unedited stuff never makes it onto the air, but this is something we thought you ought to see. By two o'clock in the morning, the calm of Hugo's eye had passed and the second phase of the storm was coming on shore here at Long Beach. The wind is so high that when it whips... Oh my. <laughs> that was WTD's Ed Crump at Long Beach. Who has recovered nicely, we should mention. We also had a blooper from the coast okay. last night. Many of you know how tough it is to cover things from the coast, and it was no different for us this time. Ed Crump was out at the beach last night trying to show us the fury of the hurricane, and here's what happened. By 2 o'clock in the morning, the calm of Hugo's eye had passed, and the second phase of the storm was coming on shore here at Long Beach. The wind is so high that when it whips... Hope you all have a better weekend than that. Good night, everybody. Music has a way of reviving one's recollection and causes one to remember some things that happened in the past, the good times as well as the bad ones. Jesse White, parking lot attendant in downtown Raleigh, has a lot to remember about the music world. Jesse was a vocalist working with big bands across the country from 1943 until 1966. Okay. Jesse Watkins was one of the vocalists in the famous Harry James band. James' trumpet playing kind of overshadowed him back then, but he says that didn't matter because he was so much in love with what he was doing and having to meet and work with so many people. That attitude has stuck with him, even to his job today at a parking lot where he collects parking fees. I've always been the type, like, I have a lot of people around. You know. And you have a lot of fun talking to them. Very interesting. 
Jesse likes to talk about the many fabulous places where he once lavished and ate with his songs. Well, I've uh, been around a lot of clubs. Uh, I used to work at Swallow Hotel when I was real young. And that's when I hooked up with Harry Davis up there. And uh, left there. And I shook around to the uh, El Morocco Supper Club, uh, Club Carlisle, Club 15. We had a radio show on uh, uh, WMSN uh, for, uh, and our sponsor was Club 15. Watkins is now a double amputee resulting from diabetes. But his spirit's are always high. You will always hear him exchanging pleasantries with his regular customers on their way out of the parking lot. Have a good weekend. You too, have fun. See ya. Well, it's just uh, normal nature. Tell him have a good day, uh, have fun, uh, something like that, you know. Jesse's co-worker is George Scott. The two have been working together since 1987. George, when the times are busy, collects the fees, and Jesse is the cashier. Together, they seem to make a happy team. He comes on about 4.30, and uh, we work together. I work out here. Sometimes people are clear out there. I take up the money. If I don't have a bill to make change with, I just yell at Jesse, and they take it from him. And uh, I carry a bunch of quarters in my pocket to make a small change with me. George didn't know Jesse was once a celebrity until a few months after they had been working together. Yeah, I didn't know he was that uh, a celebrated character. He's done a lot of things. A lot of things like crooning the old standards the way he did when he was 15 years younger and 100 pounds lighter. Today, he still entertains himself and some of his regulars. The TVD's videographer, Dave Wertheim, he caught him on videotape. Old black magic that you weep so well. Those icy fingers up and down my spine. That same old witchcraft when your eyes met mine. That same old tingle that you feel inside. When that elevator begins to ride. Darling, down and down I go. Round and round I in a spin. Loving this spin I'm in under this old black magic called love. I got a cold right now, I can't get it out. <laughs> this in between all the greetings and salutations. Hi. Oh, you're going to load me down with two, huh? Well, thank you. <laughs> you say you had to change? Yeah. OK, so you get 19 back. And he must feel the complaints, too. I about should have stamped my ticket. Well, they'll do that after six o'clock. After six, I know. I don't have to get down here after six. He brings along his radio, and sometimes he sings or whistles along with some of the old tunes. Yeah, sometime when he was playing, I'll whistle with it, you know. And particularly when the ladies are going across in the back down in the bottom, I'll, I'll whistle then to let them know that I'm up here watching them. You know, because there's so many strange people who walk back and forth through the lot. How you doing? Good, sir. Fifty. His philosophy is to forget about not having legs, but live every day to the fullest and be as happy as you can be and sing a happy song. According to my doctor, he said when he was taking the last leg off, he the oldest man I, he ever seen that was uh, under the under anesthetic and singing a song, going to sleep. <laughs> He said I was singing, uh, what is that Dean Martin song, Everybody Loves Somebody Sometimes. He said that's what I was singing when they were knocking me out. <laughs> so if you're downtown Raleigh and parking your car in his lot, don't be surprised if you hear what sounds like an old time, an old pro, singing a song that brings back your memories of perhaps the good times under the bright lights in the big city. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jesse Watt. Oh, nothing at all. Half of love never appeared to me. If your eyes could never could yield to me, no, I rather have nothing at all. Jesse Watkins still has that great baritone voice, and he says all the memories of the big times are still there, and they're very precious to him. turned to anguish today after an 18-hour search ended less than 50 feet from where it began. Police divers found the body of two-year-old Jamie Davis on the bottom of a neighbor's backyard swimming pool. Family members say the young child apparently walked away from his aunt's home last night and disappeared in less than three minutes. The only way the child could have gotten in was to have climbed a fence and to have gone in. Do you really believe a two-year-old child could have scaled a four-foot chain-link fence? That's possible. That's possible. But some neighborhood residents fear the drowning may be more than accidental, saying their children were frightened yesterday by a strange man who would stop and stare at them. And I looked out my window, I, you know, he was still standing there. And I went out, and you know, he walked off slowly, and I said, kept saying, excuse me, excuse me, come here. That fueled concern among more than 100 residents who helped policemen and firemen search the neighborhood for seven hours last night. This morning, volunteers hooked streets looking in storm drains and under houses. Chopper 11 was called in to help a police spotter with an aerial search of nearby woods. Now we have trees and bushes that we're dealing with, and it's, it's just very difficult to see from, from ground level. Police say they decided to search the dark, murky waters of the pool a third time in broad daylight. That's when they found the body. For now, detectives don't suspect kidnapping or any foul play and have ruled the drowning accidental. They say the four-foot fence around the pool complies with all local safety ordinances. And as one neighborhood parent put it, this is the kind of tragedy that hard to all of us as a reminder just how quickly child's play can become a deadly game. Very five minutes. Everybody always says five minutes. Five minutes, I guess that's all it takes, I guess. In Fayetteville, Greg Barnes, WTVD 11 News. Halloween. It's for kids, right? Well, this face found in a Raleigh costume shop is perhaps best described as indifferent. Come on, let's face it. Halloween is for us, the grown-ups. Well, but you're going to be a belly dancer. I can't be one. That's not a belly dancer. That's a hair. That's a... Here's... ...models the latest in adult Halloween fashion, the Batman. Layer by layer, the comic book hero is created. This outfit will cost you about 200 bucks, but Larry says it's worth it. This outfit here is... It's real cool, you know, because you don't run around and see a Batman all the time, so, you know. When you say it's real cool, you mean you meet a lot of girls when you dress like that? Well, yeah, because you can take them in your cape and you can wrap them around, you know, and it's like, hey, you know, Batman do his thing. Batman <laughs> is just one of the many options available this Halloween. Witness all these masks. A guy could have a hard time making up his mind. I think I ought to dress up as. Seeing it looks like you like purple and uh, you mm -hmm. have a nice sense of humor, I would suggest the Joker. The Joker? Mm -hmm. The Joker? Uh, uh, how much would that cost me? Um, around 200 Do you have this in a 40 long? <laughs> we only have that one left. Just this one size, huh? In the interest of maintaining some semblance of credibility, mm -hmm. I opt to go without the white face paint, but... You get the idea. I, I think I could do the Joker, huh? You got to get the laugh. You know, ha, 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 you know. If the adults are somewhat camera shy, perhaps it is because this Halloween thing really is a kid's celebration. Look at this smiling Marilea de Bear. Dad just bought her a clown costume. Happy Halloween. For Night Watch in Raleigh, George Mallet, WTVD 11 News. So you can be Batman for $200 or the Joker for $200, but my favorite costume costs just a little bit more than that. For just about $70,000, you can go out as a television news, you can go out as a television news videographer. Uh, $67,000 without the tripod. So, $200 and you can go out dressed as Batman or the Joker. Well, for just a little bit more than that, say about $70,000, you can go out dressed as a television news photographer. My favorite costume, $67,000 without the tripod. <laughs>